Welcome to my channel people author link will be on description the human senses have their own limits. For example, eyesight is only useful for things that are in your range of vision, smelling is only useful when your target is emitting a smell, and let's not talk about taste and touch because they require contact. As for hearing, it's only reliable when your target isn't moving faster than the speed of the sound. In this instant, Killer B used some kind of clone jutsu to hide his real presence and he did it perfectly, I didn't know when he did this, maybe when I was distracted during my power up, however it may be, he did it perfectly. And now, using his very high experience he was capable of completely hiding his presence and shifting my attention to that small hill while tricking my eye which I started to heavily rely on into believing that he was still behind his attack but when that clone disappeared I understood. I f'd it up. Finding my strong senses useless, I had no time to react, I only had one thing left to rely on. My instincts. Instincts that were recently strengthened by my hunter talent and previously by Karama's inheritance, so the moment I felt danger coming from above me, I did the only thing I could in this situation and that is to summon my Susano. Different from the previous time however where I could barely summon its rib cage, this time both the rib cage and the hand appeared guarding directly above me and Killer B was finally capable of taking a good look at this weird ability. TCH this kid is really fast at reacting and what's this dark structure, thought B in his mind. Killer B was using his lightning release chakra mode to its full power appearing like a lightning bolt in the air above me and when he was near my head. His hand transformed into one of Yuki's huge hands and he smashed his fist right on top of my Suzanu's hand. Boom asterisk this was an attack that had speed, power, and weight. All pushed to the extreme and combined in one, and to my surprise. The result was the hand of my Susano breaking into pieces followed by the rib cage and finally my crossed arms which I barely had the time to cross in front of my chest thanks to the few moments bought by the Susano. C-R-E-A-A-C-C-K asterisk I was smashed into the ground creating a huge crater in it, and both my hands kept creating some weird sounds but in the end, they didn't crack thanks to my huge physique attribute which was no joke, and I quickly jumped away from Killer B and looked at this dangerous man in wariness who was looking at me in absolute shock in his face. Why you actually survived this, finally the shock caused Killer B to forget to rap as he exclaimed. TCH this hurts a lot but I believe my hands will recover in no time, I thought while looking at my slightly bruised hands that didn't break from such a terrifying attack that could put a hole in a mountain. However, I couldn't feel proud of my achievement because the reality is that I was tricked and I almost paid for by my life. Can you really surprise me, but I will beat you, this I guarantee, said B back to his rapping, meanwhile he was talking inside with Yuki with a frown on his face. Yo. Comrade what was that? I am getting tired of the abilities of this brat, Yuki seriously said, that is Suzano, it's an ability of the Mangekio Sharingan that puts a huge burden on the body and the eyes. This kid doesn't seem to be so proficient in using it that's why he could barely summon a hand which we are lucky for. This ability is famously called the ultimate offense and defense so be careful, yes, this I know, did you see how tough that kid though, replied B again. Yes. His body is abnormally tough, even with how weakened your attack got it should have. Still been enough to destroy any person hit with it without any protection. Yet that kid took it on with his bare body and only got some bruises. You should be really careful, Killer B nodded before he exited his mind space and saw the kid getting enveloped in the first tailed beast transformation with four tails behind him. He's really using Kurama's chakra, how did he convince him? thought Yuki in wonder at the event unfolding in front of his eyes. And then the terrible fight between these two continued. Meanwhile, on the rest of this battlefield, Kanaha's forces were barely holding back Kumo's forces using Shikaku's tactics and taking advantage of the terrain. However, they were slowly getting pushed back because of the sheer difference in numbers and many casualties started appearing on the ranks of both sides. Meanwhile, the ongoing fight between Kurama and the Rakage was getting more and more intense with a inflicting some cuts on Kurama's sturdy body and some bruises started appearing on the body of the now angry Rakage from getting smashed many times and he noticed his brother getting injured during his fight but the Nine Tails never gave him the chance to go help him so their stalemate continued. On the other fronts, each of Kanaha's forces were following their assigned plans. Against Suna, Shisui issued a final command to the controlled Homura to bring some chaos on the forces of the deserters making it easier for Kanaha's forces to deal with them. 
Then he released his control over him to focus on trying to take control of the one tail who he found was sealed inside the son of the current case cage, but they had to first force them to use it on this battlefield and it wasn't easy as they also had to deal with all of their 6,000 strong forces along with the case cage. Against Iwa, Kashina and Tsunade were working together to repel Onoki and try to unseal or seal their Jinchuriki which they weren't successful in doing yet and Kanaha's forces were barely able to handle the pressure from Iwa's huge number of forces which reached 9,000 the biggest number so far and even with the help of Tsunade's summon Katsuyu, the number of casualties was getting higher and higher. Against Kiri, Jiraiya was using his incomplete sage mode and fighting against the manipulated Mizukage Yagura Karataki who already transformed into his second tailed beast mode and was trying to find an opportunity to release him from the control of Obito's Genjutsu. Meanwhile, his toad summon Gamabunta was helping Kanaha's forces to deal with Kari's forces to make up for the difference in numbers. And finally, Hiruzen, Minato, Mukai, Kakashi, and Fugaku were confronting the Akatsuki trio of Tobi, Kakuzu, and Kisame along with Orochimaru and Danzo. Orochimaru summoned his snake Manda while Danzo summoned Baku and they were currently in a very heated fight against Hiruzen and his summon Enma in a 4 vs 2 fight but Hiruzen was handling it very well. Minato on the other hand didn't engage Tobi right away and they were talking about past events. Kisame laughed when he saw Kakashi and Mukai were his opponent s they were surprisingly similar with both of them having a dojutsu in their left eyes, one with a sharingan and the other a byakugan. And this fight started right away with Mukai taking the lead while Kakashi assisting him in many ways and quickly pressuring Kisame and putting him on a tough spot as he found Samahata was hard to use against the skilled Mukai. As for Fugaku and Kakuzu, well Kakuzu was already missing two hearts as blood dripped from Fugaku's eyes reminding everyone of his nickname, Wicked Eye. All in all, the situation on each battlefield was going as planned but it didn't take long for it to change with the involvement of a dangerous group of people. The first change in the war happened in the front with Kiri. Currently, Jiraiya was fighting Yagura in a very heated battle with two old male and female frogs standing on each of his shoulders and red marking covering his face. The two small frogs were Jiraiya's master Fukusaku and his wife Shima. These more than 800 years old frogs were offering their assistance to Jiraiya to allow him to enter sage mode because he couldn't maintain it on his own otherwise, and to help him recover his natural energy. Normally a ninja's chakra is made when a balance is reached between spiritual and physical energies. However sage mode is different, it's a specialized field of jutsu that involves the use of natural energy. Senjutsu practitioners, known as sages, learn to draw natural energy inside their bodies, blending it with their own chakra to create senjutsu chakra. This chakra adds a new dimension of power to the user's techniques, while also allowing for the use of techniques that would not otherwise be possible. It also allows the user to enter sage mode, in which their physical parameters and sensing capabilities are dramatically enhanced for as long as the mode is active. However, drawing nature's energy and reaching a balance between it and physical and spiritual energies is not easy and this is just the case when out of combat. When in a fight, it is much harder because drawing natural energy requires for both the body and the mind to be still. To learn Senjutsu. First, the practitioner is required to learn how to sense nature energy and this is easier to do in places filled with it like Mount Myoboku under the teaching of toads or Ryachi Cave under the teaching of snakes. Second, the learners must have a very strong chakra to begin with. Otherwise, the moment they try to draw in nature energy, it might overwhelm them and the result. In the best case scenario turns into the shape of the animal you are learning it from and in a bad case, you will directly turn into stone. A talented person like Jiraiya was barely capable of reaching that balance and entering sage mode on his own but he couldn't keep it up in a fight because he can't draw natural energy without being in a meditative state, that's why he needs the assistance of his master and his wife. Back to the fight Yagura rushed at Jiraiya with incredible speed trying to use his coral palm jutsu on him. This jutsu causes corals to grow on any surface he touches. When used on opponents, it restricts their movement and eventually immobilizes them making it a very deadly jutsu. Jiraiya however wasn't nice enough to allow himself to get caught in such a thing so, the moment Yagura came close to him, his long spiky white hair became even bigger and sharp like spears and he attacked Yagura directly with it forcing him to retreat. 
Yagura already experienced how dangerous Jiraiya's hair is as it can even penetrate and injure his currently strong form so he wasn't going to let it happen again and after he stabilized himself, he started charging a tailed beast mode. Jiraiya noticing this, quickly used a swamp jutsu that could cover a huge surface trying to disrupt Yagura's tailed beast bomb and it worked because he was forced to stop what he was doing and felt like it was time to get serious and started transforming into his full tailed beast form. Finally, he transformed, thought Jiraiya as he gave a quick look to both Fukusaku and Shima and they understood what to do right away. Sage Art. Gomon. In an instant Jiraiya started spewing a huge amount of oil from his mouth followed by Fukusaku performing a large wind release jutsu to propel the oil, and Shima performing a large fire release jutsu to ignite it. In an instant, Yagura who transformed into the Three Tails Isobu's huge form and was still stuck in the swamp suddenly found himself covered in oil, and before he could understand what was happening. He saw a wind and fire jutsu coming his way causing him to widen his eyes in surprise as he knew that he will end up heavily injured if such a combination attack hit him. His instincts screamed at him and told him that within an instant, the area will be filled with oil burning at temperatures of thousands of degrees creating an inferno of such magnitude that, within an instant, the target and the surrounding area will be reduced to cinders. Not good, he was waiting for me to transform from the start tch, thought Yagura in worry but just when Jiraiya was starting to get smug with the success of his plan and felt like his mission was soon to be over, a huge patch of sand and earth started raising from the ground and intercepted his attack just in time protecting Yagura behind it. Yagura without hesitating used both wind and water release on himself to remove all the oil from his body before he stopped and looked at the man that saved him, or thing. It was a hunched person that resembled a scorpion wearing a black robe with red cloud markings on it, with a long metallic tail that ended with a very sharp tip extending from under his robe. It was Sasori from the Akatsuki and the missing Nin from Suna. Jiraiya instantly understood he was in trouble because the person in front of him was a member of the Akatsuki and at that moment he hoped, hoped that at least only his battlefield was interfered with. However, his hopes were in vain because all the other fronts had similar situations. In Suna, Juzo appeared intercepting Itachi and Shisui who were already struggling to fight the K's cage to the point that Shisui was forced to use his Suzano and now they were going to get forced into a much worse situation. In the Iwa front, Tsunade was having an intense fight with the Suchikage Onoki already activating her strongest Jutsu Ninja Art Creation Rebirth, Strength of a Hundred Technique. Which made markings appear not only on her face but all over her body. She was having a very bloody fight with Onoki and some of the ninjas helping him and had no regard for her injuries which kept healing constantly and only dodged attacks like Onoki's dust release which she can't regenerate from the damage it could cause as it literally disintegrates anything into particles. Meanwhile, Kashina was using her Uzumaki clan's adamantine sealing chains and was trapping Han, the Jinchuriki of the Five Tails with them and using the support of Kanaha's forces and Tsunade trying to buy her time to unseal the Five Tails. She was about to succeed in freeing the five tails and make him go berserk inside the battlefield, but just as she was about to succeed the sun suddenly was hidden behind something, and when everyone raised their heads. They saw a blue-haired woman in black robes and white wings like that of an angel hovering in the sky above the battlefield and behind her was a sea of small pieces of paper which covered the sun. And quickly, those pieces of paper started descending and either exploding among the ranks of Kanaha's forces or penetrating them like sharp knives causing that image of an angel to turn into a bloody devil. This was Conan. And finally, there was the Kumo battlefield. Not just one person appeared, instead, six orange-haired people wearing Akatsuki robes with weird eyes appeared at the same time. They were the six paths of pain. And now, their leader Pain was hovering above the battlefield looking at the fight between Kurama and A as well as me and Killer B before he turned his attention to Kanaha's struggling forces and said without emotions in his voice. Feel the pain. A boy and a humanoid beast were facing each other in a very intense battle. The boy had four black chains revolving around him with a very ominous aura which he continuously attacked the beast with. He also carried two short swords in his hands and the manifestation of a black skeletal rib cage with a skeletal hand surrounding him defended his body. Meanwhile, the beast tried all kinds of ways to injure the kid or trick him like he previously did but nothing worked again making them reach a stalemate. B. Stop holding back, said Yuki to the frustrated killer B. TCH, okay, 
replied B before he hastily retreated to make some distance between himself and the kid's chains which he already understood how long their range is. What's he doing I thought as I had a bad feeling of what Killer B was going to do and my worries soon came true as he opened his mouth and started drawing positive and negative energies creating a tailed beast bomb as tall as me. Killer B is the most perfect living Jinchuriki currently in the world and his cooperation with his tailed beast is almost seamless allowing him to create this tailed beast bomb in a very short time. Of course, before this, he calculated the distance to retreat properly so that even if I try to rush at him, I won't reach him in time with my speed and range but what's more disturbing is he also calculated the direction and positioned himself to face Kanaha's camp. TCH this is really troublesome now I can't dodge or they are going to be doomed, I thought as I quickly bit off the thumbs of both of my right and left hands and put them on the ground, summoning jutsu, quintuple rashomen, I don't like using this jutsu because it uses so much chakra as much as 4000 for each gate and even though currently, this jutsu reached level 9, its chakra consumption only lowered by 160. I remembered from the anime that Orochimaru only needed three gates to block Naruto's tail beast bomb. However, Naruto at that time only had four tails in his second tail beast mode so he can't be compared to the current killer bee with eight tails so I plan to use four gates. As my hands touched the ground, Killer B already started compressing the huge bomb to a smaller but even more dangerous bomb as huge gates started emerging from the ground in front of me. Four huge Rashomon gates that had demon-like faces appeared with different colors similar to those of the different elements. The color of the first gate was red, the second gate was green, the third was blue and the fourth was yellow, and with them appearing I lost a massive 15,000 chakra which is almost half of my current chakra reserves. TCH I can't let him use this again or I will simply die of exhaustion, I thought and just as I ended this thought Killer B sent the ball in my direction. People fighting all around us already noticed the emergence of the huge gates and when they saw the reason for them everyone standing behind me quickly retreated from their location while Kurama looked at me worriedly and even started preparing a bomb of his own to attack Killer B with but he was interrupted by A. The bomb arrived in no time and made contact with the first gate which it destroyed before it reached the second gate and when it hit it. A huge explosion was created that was weakened by the third and fourth gates before it reached my location in the shape of strong wind that did me no damage. TCH he blocked even this attack but I can tell that he exhausted a huge amount of chakra doing it so if we hit him again he's going to be completely drained, said Yuki to B, yo don't worry. We're gonna make him sorry replied B but just as he was about to attack again he heard Yuki yell in his head, B. A very dangerous group is approaching this battlefield from the sky, Yuki wasn't the only one who noticed them. Me, Kurama, Killer B, and the Rakage and many sensors from both hidden villages like the members of the Hyuga clan using their Byakugan also noticed the same huge chakra coming our way. It was as if we had a mutual agreement and we stopped our fights as we looked at what appeared in the air a few seconds later. It was an unusual green bird. Not only does it demonstrate a prominent and jagged yellow-colored beak, but it also features three distinct legs and light purple eyes with circles inside of them. They were the Rinnegan indicating Nagato was controlling it. It also has one giant chakra receiver sticking through the right side of its back and another one sticking through the left side of its neck. I instantly recognized this bird as Nagato's animal path summon and I had a terrible feeling when I saw the six people standing on top of it. They were the six paths of pain. They consisted of the diva path which is Nagato's favorite and used the body of his friend Yahiko and it has the power to manipulate attractive and repulsive forces, but it cannot be performed in rapid succession and requires some time to recharge minimum 5 seconds. It also grants the use of the Jutsu Chibaku Tensai which allows the user to create a huge makeshift terrestrial body from all the surrounding matter that is attracted to a black sphere released by this Jutsu. This is how the moon of the current Naruto world was created and how Kagaya was sealed. The Asura path is a bold man with an unusual body shape which used to be a wandering puppeteer before he was captured by Nagato. He had a distinctively wide neck and no ears. It grants the user the ability to augment their own body to summon mechanized armor and various ballistic and mechanical weaponry. The human path is a man with long orange hair that used to be a ninja from the village hidden in the waterfalls. It grants a Rinnegan user the ability to read the mind of any target by placing his hand on the target's head or chest and yanking the soul out of the body resulting in the inevitable death of the target afterward. 
The Naraka Path is a short-haired man who used to be a priest before he was killed by Nagato and made into one of his paths, the most important one, as it grants the user two main abilities. Interrogation and restoration by summoning the King of Hell. The Animal Path is a man with long hair tied into a ponytail with a fringe hanging down from the right side of his head who used to be a ninja from the Fuma clan that resided in the Land of Sound. It grants the user the ability to summon various animals and creatures to aid in battle which appears to be immortal as even if they die they can be summoned again and it can even summon humans. The Prada Path is a stocky man with beady brown eyes with his hair tied in a short ponytail. It grants the user the ability to absorb chakra in any shape or form, making any ninjutsu ineffective against it. My heart sank when I saw them and then the feeling increased, even more when I saw pain glance at us before he said, feel the pain, and the green bird they were riding on top of started diving directly towards the center of Kanaha's ninjas with the Prada path absorbing any attacks heading towards it. What followed when they landed is simply a huge massacre. That's all I felt, terrible anger at what's happening, a wave of hopelessness at my own weakness, and a suffocating feeling of despair at the thought of facing such a monster. But this is when my insanity kicking in once more. An ominous but still aura started revolving around the body of the young boy which killer B who was distracted by the ensuing massacre and trying to see if the newcomers were friends or foes also noticed and he started having a bad feeling. I pushed my body to its absolute limits and rushed in the direction of Kanaha's army. Killer B didn't try to stop me as my target was clearly the new enemy and not Kumo's forces so he turned around and decided to help his brother seal the nine tails once and for all so he quickly rushed in that direction arriving in an instant and transformed into the full massive eight tails form while giving the boy he was fighting one last glance as he thought, rest in peace. Yo, brother, let's deal with this together, said Killer B as he started wrestling with Kurama in his full Yuki form. A simply nodded at him and took out a huge pot that has the kanji of lightning written on it and it caused Kurama to growl in annoyance. Meanwhile back at the battlefield, Pain was killing people left and right and with Kanaha's forces already occupied by Kumo's. No one could spare the time to deal with him nor was there someone who could face him so he or she ordered a retreat. However, it won't be easy to retreat, and possibly only the lucky ones will be able to escape under such intense attacks especially against Kumo's ninjas who are known for their lightning release and speed. Diva Path Pain was strangling a Hyuga by the neck while retrieving a black rod out of the sleeve of his robe and was planning to stab him in the heart with it. That Hyuga member was only a Chunin so there was no chance for him to free himself no matter how much he struggled, punched, or kicked at Pain. So, he was going to accept his dark fate of certain death but that's when a kid that was enveloped in red chakra and a very ominous aura while holding two short swords in his hands appeared at a terrifying speed breaking the sound barrier as he slashed at Payne's extended hand. Payne looked at the sharpness of the short swords heading his way as well as the red bubbling tailed beast chakra strengthening the boy and knew his hand would be gone if he allowed him to connect so he simply raised his free hands at the first person he deemed worthy in this battlefield. A very strong repulsive force came out of Payne's extended hand threatening to send me so far away in the distance however I already anticipated this. The moment the repulsive force hit, my shadow clone was pushed away before he disintegrated into a puff of smoke causing Payne to widen his eyes a little in surprise as I appeared out of the shadows of one of the trees and attacked him again before his cooldown was over. What I used is another use of my Yomi no Kuni that allows me to mimic a dead person effectively hiding all my presence from getting detected by simple chakra sensing and with this being a battlefield, it was even more effective. However, I can't move during this state so it needs to be used carefully. Pain quickly regained his calm and retrieved a rod from his sleeve to block my swords while still suspicious how someone could avoid his detection. At the same time, his other paths were already converging in this direction lessening the pressure on Kanaha's army that was dealing with many of Payne's summoned animals like a rhino with very strong defense, a multi-headed dog that keeps on multiplying into smaller versions of itself when attacked, etc. The clash of our attacks created a huge shockwave and to Payne's surprise that rod was cracked and he was pushed back making him realize that I surpassed him in terms of strength which caused him to involuntarily let go of the Hyuga he was holding. I also noticed that my short sword got slightly chipped making me frown and I decided to avoid direct confrontations like this in the future. Cough cough t thank cough you, the Hyuga Chunin kept coughing and gasping for air and I simply nodded at him and said, run. 
he looked at my Mangekio Sharingan in admiration before he nodded and quickly left while I looked at the six paths of pain that started approaching me and said, why did you decide to join the battlefield all of a sudden? This question really perplexed me and I had a feeling that they didn't simply interfere in only this battlefield seeing that Nagato's here alone. Change in plans, replied Pain emotionlessly as he looked briefly in Kurama's direction and said, Kid, join my organization. It seems Nagato saw a lot of potential in me and is even tempted to get me to join him huh? And I was wondering why would he answer my question, I thought as a smile formed on my face. A terrifying smile as four blockchains suddenly came out of my body and attacked the six paths of pain along with the rest of the ninja from Kumo. Most of them dodged in time and the Naraka path simply hid behind the Prata path which blocked one of my chains and absorbed some of its chakra causing me to hastily retrieve it but the animal and human paths couldn't dodge in time and were both stabbed by my chains. Diva path pain didn't seem too distressed by this as he believed he could just restore them using the king of hell but unfortunately for him death is absolute. As I retrieved my chains with some Kumo ninja still attached to them along with the animal and human paths, I smirked devilishly at Diva Pain, and Nagato for some reason felt like I was looking directly at him. Nagato's eyes widened as he watched what happened next. All the corpses started rotting before they disintegrated into nothingness and he felt his connection with them disappear completely, impossible. Yelled Nagato in his hiding place but no one heard him. The moment this happened, the animals rampaging through Kanaha's forces disappeared into puffs of smoke as their summoner was no more. I should avoid the ability of that Prata path, he absorbed a lot of my chakra, I thought as I looked at my chakra reserves that were already at dangerous levels having only around 20% left so I took a chakra regenerating pill allowing me to quickly restore it back to 100% making Nagato surprised again. Meanwhile. Darui who was Kumo's commander in the absence of the rakage saw what my chains did to some of Kumo's ninja and understood their danger so he decided to not keep waiting for my fight with pain to be over and started ordering some of Kumo's Jonin to attack me using all kinds of attacks with him at the lead using his storm release. Hiyashi's eyes shone with determination when he saw the huge beasts that were wrecking Kanaha's formation disappear, as well as my fight with pain and now Kumo's forces attacking me so he decided to stop the retreat and ordered. Attack, don't let our comrades die alone. And this was the beginning of the end, ha ha ha, a boy panted for breath as an ocean of corpses laid splattered on the ground around him belonging to both allies and enemies. His body was littered with injuries and he was barely conscious while silently standing in front of three people looking at him in anger. They were Pain, the Rakage A, and Killer B. As for the boy. He was the heavily injured Bakorio who used all his chakra and regenerating pills as well as every ability he could muster in the previous fight. Kid I have to commend you, to cause this many casualties on your own and in our presence, you should be proud of your achievement. However, unfortunately for you, it all ends here, said a with a melancholic look while looking at the blind boy standing in front of him. Indeed, Bakorio used his Mangekio Sharingan to its absolute possible limits and the result was both his usually black. Eyes were now gray and only darkness filled his vision and he could barely hear the rakage's words. Just how many people have I killed? I thought in guilt which quickly washed away, however, I couldn't have asked for a better form of training. I quickly ended my thoughts and raised my head in the direction of each of these three insurmountable mountains that I couldn't cross especially when the effect of my agility potion wore off. You three are strong cough cough, I said as I coughed some blood in the process before I smiled but my system is stronger. My last sentence made the rakage have a bad feeling and he sent a terrifying punch directly to my throat to kill me. However, I simply said in my mind, load, darkness more potent than the one I experienced from being blind overwhelmed my vision before it quickly vanished and I found a familiar scenery in front of my eyes. It was Kanaha's huge gate. I quickly checked my body and felt that everything was okay but then, the mental fatigue kicked in and I remembered what I just experienced. All the people I killed, all the people that were killed around me, the mutilated bodies, the smell of blood, the war cries. Everything flashed in front of my eyes causing me to puke and a concerned Hiyashi quickly rushed to my side and asked, Bakoryo what's wrong? He used his Byakugan and checked my body for any injuries and when he found nothing, he heaved a sigh of relief and waited for my response, I am fine, don't worry, I barely said this with my eyes closed through my gritted teeth and with my whole body shaking continuously. 
You are a very important part of the plan. I am sorry but I need to make sure you are alright otherwise we might need to change it so if anything is bothering you please tell me and I will try to help you, said Hiyashi with a serious face. Inside, however, Hiyashi was sighing at the decision of giving a kid so much responsibility and thought, he's probably very nervous about going to war, still he was fine during all the preparation period until just now, did something happen when I wasn't paying attention. I slowly calmed down and an ominous stillness emitted from my body, I'm fine now don't worry. Let's go, he or she looked at my back and gave one last look while thinking, I hope you are really fine, before he followed me. This was a save point I made one day before the start of the war just so I can experience it as much as I need to and make it my training ground. I quickly made some recollections of what happened as I started my trip with he or she to set up our camp in the land of hot waters. Someone probably informed Pain about the release of the Nine Tails so he probably was scared that Kuma would be able to seal Kurama with the artifact of the Sage of the Six Paths, the Kohaku no Johei. Then with their advanced Jinchuriki training methods, they might acquire a new terrifying Jinchuriki making them too strong to handle even for the Akatsuki. This would make the mission to retrieve the tailed beasts very hard and they might not even be able to accomplish it. Not to mention that thanks to the teamwork of A and Killer B, they were indeed able to seal Kurama in that pot and then join the fight against me, tch how troublesome, I thought in annoyance before I looked at the system and noticed that most of my skills rose greatly in level and I even unlocked some new quests, quest throwing art 3, reach level 50 in your throwing art, reward, 500 points, plus 20 free attribute points, quest swordsmanship 3, reach level 50 in your swordsmanship, reward, 500 points, swift sword style. Quest Ninja Killer, Elite Jonin, Kill 1 Elite Jonin Level Ninja. Reward. 1000 points, 30% Akamichi Bloodline, I directly accepted all the rewards not. Worried that they will disappear if I go back in time as the quests can be reopened if that happens. I checked the description of this sword style and I was pleasantly surprised. Swift sword style. Strike like the wind, sharp and fast. For each level, the user's attack speed with a sword is increased by 5%. I was pleasantly surprised and learned it without hesitation which caused a huge influx of information to appear on my head, as for the free attributes points. I will use them with the rest of my 155 free points when the time comes. As for the bloodline, it mentioned that it would make it easier for me to learn Yang release related jutsu as well as increase my defense depending on the percentage of the bloodline. So with 30% bloodline, my defense became 15% stronger and I even completed a bloodline related quest, but its reward can wait for later. Satisfied with my gains, I marched to war with more confidence than before in a heart that was growing heavier. One day later we arrived at the camp again and I didn't bother to tell Hiyashi to change the plans about announcing Kurama publicly because he's going to join the war either way and at most, it would buy us a few minutes so it wasn't worth it. Instead, I kept adjusting my state of mind and I used up all my attribute points before the start of the war and I went to Kurama to ask him for more chakra as now my strengthened body can store more of it. Kurama almost didn't recognize me as my body grew up a lot from those attributes but my chakra signature can't be faked so he confirmed my identity right away and didn't mind transferring some more of his chakra to me and it was enough to allow me to use the first tailed beast form to its full power with nine tails extending from me. Thanks, Kurama, I said but noticing the heartless look in my eyes Kurama felt something was wrong so he said, are you okay? Yes, this is necessary, I replied. Kurama opened his eyes in confusion about what I meant before he said, what do you mean? I simply turned around and said, let's go, show them your might, Kurama hid his thoughts well and excitedly stood up towering above everything even in his small state and said, Gur don't worry consider this battlefield already won. I didn't reply to him, although inside I said to myself, I wish what you said was true, all of this wouldn't be necessary, but then I quickly hardened my resolve again and marched to the battlefield, my ultimate training ground. It wasn't long before the war started again and while on top of Kurama's shoulder, we used the same tactic to draw Killer B and the rakage away. However, this time I didn't hesitate to go all out from the start, and the moment he attacked me I used my Mangekio Sharingan's ability, Yomi no Kuni, I muttered and just when he was in front of me. Four dark and ominous chains appeared out of nowhere and attacked the rakage who was stuck in midair with incredible speed. 
the situation won't be the same, I thought as I looked coldly at the rakage enveloped in his lightning chakra mode. Not good, thought as he tried to change the position of his body midair but it was to no avail as the chains also adjusted their attack direction instantly so left with no choice and against his screaming instincts. A used his left leg and stepped on one of the chains and jumped away with such a force that he created a crater on the ground when he landed. His fall created a huge cloud of dust and dirt, and when it settled, everyone on the battlefield was shocked at what they saw. A, standing there with a serious face looking at the boy on top of the nine tails, the lower portion of his left leg, gone. Killer B was the first to notice the rakage's injured leg causing him to scream in worry and rush toward him, brother. Seeing Killer B rushing here, I jumped from Karama's shoulder with a terrifying speed as I already took the agility potion and slashed him with my new swift sword style forcing him to draw out one of his short blades to block it. Clang a loud sound echoed from the clash of blades. TCH this guy is really strong, I thought as unlike what happened with pain, this guy didn't budge at all even though the power of my attack was greatly enhanced by the jump. Strong, was the only thought in Killer B's mind that was filled with rage so he decided to enter his second tailed beast mode directly to get rid of this dangerous kid that could injure his brother as soon as possible. Seeing him starting to transform. I also started using Karama's chakra, bring it on. I said as I rushed at him signifying the true beginning of our second fight. Sometime later, ha ha ha, again a heavily injured boy could be seen panting while surrounded by a sea of corpses as well as three people standing in front of him. A very familiar scene for the currently blind boy. However, what was different is that his enemies also had various injuries on their bodies and weren't unscathed like the first time. Kid I have to commend you, to cause us these many casualties on your own in our presence, you should be proud of your achievement. However, unfortunately for you, it all ends here, a repeated the same thing he said before. However, this time he said it with both a melancholic look as well as admiration while looking at the blind boy standing in front of him that dealt him such terrifying injuries. I didn't respond to what he said and simply said in my mind, load, waiting for the usual blindness to come. However, it never did. Instead to the horror of the boy who almost felt like time was stopped thanks to his senses being pushed to their absolute limits. He saw a notification appear in his head lighting the darkness he fell into when he became blind. Error host, insufficient energy for this specific function, what do you mean insufficient energy? I yelled inside my head at the system as I felt my instincts screaming feeling a terrible level of danger from the action that Rakage was about to make. The Rakage's hand slowly started being pulled back clearly planning to hit me with the finishing blow, that's when I heard the answer from the system. Initial energy left in the system after host's reincarnation is almost depleted and can't support a function like, loading. I didn't have any time to waste in this situation so I could only think, how can I recharge you, I asked hurriedly. Host requires energy that is connected and compatible with the system. Host can use the system's energy protocol to search for compatible energy sources nearby, do it, I said as I felt the rakage's hand already moving in my direction and the wind from it already started pushing against my face. Initializing the system energy protocol 5% 10% 0.100%. Search complete 2 compatible energy sources found nearby, host's chakra and host's life energy, would you like to use them? Yes, no, yes. Host's chakra and life energy are the new energy sources for the system calculating. Host's chakra too low, insufficient, my heart sank when I read this but I already guessed it with all my chakra exhausted in the fight, so I was only left with my life energy, and the next notification that appeared confirmed this. Calculating, host's life energy sufficient, calculating consumption to return one day in time. At this moment the rakage's hand was already millimeters from my face and the lightning covering his body already started making contact with my face calculations complete 30. Days of the host's life required yes no, yes. I yelled without hesitating and it was the same moment a punch connected with my head. Thankfully however, the darkness that comes before going back in time finally enveloped my vision again and I found myself in front of Kanaha's huge gate. When I opened my eyes I felt like a drowned man as I kept gasping for air with sweat covering all of my body resulting in another familiar scene of Hiyashi rushing to my side and asking with a concerned look on his face. Bakorio what's wrong? I looked at Hiyashi while having a feeling in my heart that I lost something precious so I dismissed him because I wanted to think about what happened, 
I am fine Hiyashi, don't worry and please leave me alone for a while. Hiyashi looked at the sweat still dripping from my face suspiciously before he sighed and said, Okay, but please remember that you are a very important part of the plan, I am sorry but I need to make sure you are alright. Otherwise, we might need to change it so if anything is bothering you please tell me and I will try to help you. I nodded at him, yes I will, before he finally sighed and left much more concerned than when he came. Meanwhile, finding myself finally alone I said in my head, system how come you required energy all of a sudden, host, no game can be played without energy, fair, f king enough, I thought in anger before I said, why didn't you tell me before it was over, host, the system only sends notifications about things when needed or discovered like when the host discovered the map function, there's an added energy function, indeed, I could see in these notifications, and when I opened the system a new small battery sign with a percentage beside it and it was almost empty at 3%. System how much will it cost me to return if I had my chakra full, host, every 10,000 points of chakra can reduce the time by one day, so, at most I can reduce it to 28 days huh, this sucks I thought in annoyance. I wish I got a bloodline that increases my chakra reserve and not that Akamichi bloodline even though it's also useful, I thought in regret. System is there a way to recharge you without using my chakra or life? I asked hoping to find a way to solve this mess. After all, returning to the time before Danzo will really cost me dearly now. Host, the system can recharge itself using nature energy, my eyes lit up when I read this and I started having hope. Great. So how long will it take you to recharge yourself? Negative, host is required to be capable of absorbing nature energy first, never mind. I thought as I felt my hopes getting crushed. Still, at least now I have a way to recharge the system in the future. I put training nature energy into my list of priorities for the future before I focused on the current situation, it has been almost 40 days since the incident with Danzo, meaning I might lose more than 3 years of my life if I return now, tch what a mess this situation really came at an unexpected time and ruined some of the plans I had for this war, as initially I wanted to keep experiencing the war to train and raise my skills, but now this came out of nowhere which is really annoying. Let's follow with the original plan for now, I will at least try to experience what each of the different fronts has to offer three times before I go back in time, I thought in determination as I decided it was worth it to spend some of my lifespan for this opportunity. This was so I can hone my skills and raise my experience against the different ways of fighting each hidden village had to offer. In Kumo, they have their strong speed and lightning release which I already saw plenty of and I am planning to experience it again. In Suna, they have their puppeteering and wind release as well as different ways of using hidden weapons and poison. In Iowa, they focus on physical strength and earth release as well as the masterful use of explosions. In Kiri, they have their assassination tactics as well as the seven ninja swordsmen, minus the swords in the possession of Juzo and Kisame, and their mist and water release. I was planning to learn all I can from each of these forces before I go back in time and I was going to do it no matter the price since I waited for so long for the situation to develop to this extent. So without hesitation, I visited Hiyashi who was organizing the forces before they set off towards Kumo's front. Hiyashi looked at me in surprise since he didn't expect me to visit after he saw me in that weird state, is he finally ready to talk about what was bothering him? Thought Hiyashi as he said with a smile, what brought you here Bakorio? I want to talk to you in private if possible, I replied with a serious face while looking at the people close by. Hiyashi felt that something was wrong with my expression so he nodded at me before he turned to his vice commander and said, continue the preparations as planned, I will be right back, the vice commander was a tall and strong man with brown hair and a determined look on his face that seemed to never change no matter what. I didn't see this guy before in the anime but I knew from the information I gathered about the army that he was a jonin named Akira Joraku, he used to be an orphan and was nurtured by Hirazan since a young age. However, because his personality wasn't fit to become an Anbu, he was raised to be a war commander, and he was doing great at this as he gained enough merits from the third ninja war to raise him to the rank of vice commander without the support of a clan and no one complained about it as he was highly respected for his competence. Just how many people died in this world even in the absence of war? Question mark single quote. I thought as I looked at this man who I couldn't help but lament the unknown fate he's going to face that's going to bring him an early death. 
I noticed Akira too shot me a weird look before he nodded at Hiyashi seriously and said, Yes commander, I went some distance away from the people with Hiyashi and we both made sure that no one was near us before we stared at each other in silence. Noticing my hesitation about what I wanted to say, Hiyashi decided to break the silence and said with a smile, Akira's is pretty good don't you think? I felt my heart constrict when I heard what he said as I felt like this guy was looking right through my heart but then I simply sighed and said, indeed, that vice commander of yours is pretty good, I can feel the aura of a leader as well as a very strong determination emanating from him, Hiyashi nodded at my assessment and shot Akira who was organizing the forces a look filled with admiration and said, actually, if not for fear that he lacks in backing and some people wouldn't like to take orders from him like some of the arrogant Hyuga clans member and those from other big clans, Akira would have been assigned the role of a commander instead of me, indeed, there are always people with superiority complex anywhere you go huh? I thought before I responded, I see, Hiyashi truthfully I have something I want to ask from you, Hiyashi looked at me with a smile and said, you want me to take on the Jinchuriki of the eight tails in your place don't you? My face froze for an instant and I didn't know what to say, I think my abilities are better suited against multiple people, and I can also ask Kurama to give you some, ha 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 ha, he or she suddenly burst out laughing cutting me off and before he followed by punching me in the head, what the hell are, yo, I tried to ask if this guy was going crazy or not but he cut me off again and gave me another knock on the head as I stared at him dumbly. I decided to wait for him to explain himself and when he stopped laughing he looked at me with a serious face he never used before and said, why are you trying to explain yourself, aren't we friends? It was like a lightning bolt exploding in my ears making a sound louder than a tailed beast bomb, am I sending my friend to his death? This thought almost swallowed my mind before a knock got me out of it again, stop thinking stupid things, said he or she with a disappointed face. I said nothing when the plan was for you to face this huge danger, so stop blaming yourself for me facing it, this is how it should have been in the first place, and most importantly. Once he paused here a terrifying presence filled with a cold pride started emitting from Hiyashi as he said coldly, have some trust in the leader of the Hyuga clan, I broke out of my days and nodded at him before my face turned ice cold, okay. I want you to deal with the Jinchuriki and buy me as much time as possible, I will help you get some of Kurama's chakra, good that will help a lot, said Hiyashi back to his normal smile however I wasn't done so I went to the main point, not only that, I will give you a clear description of the personality of A and Killer B as well as their attack patterns, jutsu, and overall strength, follow me to meet Kurama, and so to the surprise of Hiyashi, a huge amount of information about his enemy was fed to him making the fear he was hiding in his heart slightly diminish, it might not be a hopeless fight, thought Hiyashi as he looked at the huge nine-tailed fox in front of him. And, hi guys, I read the comments about why the sudden addition of the energy requirement for the system. Hmm, let's just say it's related to it being ownerless in the first place. I will post an additional chapter if anyone could guess the actual details laughing face, as for how this works, there are many ways to solve it, find a compatible energy source, after all, the system only scan the nearby vicinity, learn how to absorb nature energy without turning into a work of art. Or he might keep paying with his life like an idiot. Anyways, this energy affects all the functions of the system. Whether it is granting rewards from quests or turning what he kills into experience or granting proficiency when he repeats skills. While he or she was trying to pump up the morale of Kanaha's ninjas by explaining to them the addition of Kurama to the war. I was remembering a scene that happened twice while I was fighting with Killer B and Kumo's army and it worried me a lot. Whenever I actually start to push Killer B back and gain some edge in our battle as my mastery with my Mangekio Sharingan increases or I divert my attention to Kumo's forces or pain when he attacks. I always get interrupted by a sudden sneak attack from the Rakage who surprisingly was able to seal Kurama even though he had the 7 stars seal. As I looked at Kurama who was being paraded in front of the scared ninjas like some kind of horror show. I couldn't help but think. Those tools belonging to the Sage of the Sixth Paths are really too strong, and that rakage really isn't to be messed with. His chakra reserves for sure match a tailed beast, I opened my status to check my progress from these two wars. 
Status. Stat value name Bakorio Uchiha level 31 health 9000 plus 104 per minute chakra 15600 212 per minute stamina 4256 per minute attributes STRAGI 5 VITSTASPI 180 quadrillion 170 trillion 220 billion 260 million 420,530 free attribute points 175 155 plus 20 master close combat fighting level 74 swordsmanship level 52 throwing art level 51 ceiling art level 18 chakra control level 46 meditation level 42 fire chakra transformation level 35 wind chakra transformation level 11 water chakra transformation level 12 yin chakra transformation level 28 yang chakra transformation level 28 skills general eye of insight level 40 eye of hypnotism level 34 yomi no kuni level 15 jikaninki level 12 suzano level 11 summon Quintuple Rashomon Level 15 Shadow Clone Jutsu Level 38 Substitution Jutsu Level 28 Clone Jutsu Level 7 Body Flicker Jutsu Level 57 Transformation Jutsu Level 28 Cooking Level 27 Ninjutsu Fire Fire Ball Level 30 Great Fire Ball Level 59 Great Fire Annihilation Level 35 Wind Great Breakthrough Level 22 Water Water Bullet Level 26 Yin Taijutsu Shurikenjutsu Slithering Throwing Art Level 40 Shuriken Shadow Clone Jutsu Jutsu level 31 Kenjutsu Swift Sword Style Level 5 Juinjutsu Genjutsu Fuinjutsu Senjutsu Abilities Save and Load Appraisal Map Bloodlines Uchiha 50% Akamichi 30% Talents Chakra Master Body Greet Master Cooking Advanced Ceiling Advanced Hunter Medium Not Bad Many of my skills rose in level and I can't wait for my close combat fighting skill to reach level 75 The reward for that must be great I thought in delight because the improvements I experienced in this war were truly huge and it made me feel like it was worth it. Especially in the abilities of my Mangekio Sharingan. Now, with their level higher, they became stronger and would cause less stress on my body and eyes so I can use them even more. This is something no Uchiha could achieve other than the extremely talented Madara and Obito who was injected with Hashirama's cells, so he was capable of recovering from the after effects of using his eyes which is why he didn't go blind from overusing Kamui even though he didn't have an eternal Mangekio Sharingan. After I finished checking my stats and skills, I noticed that Akira was about to finish his speech so I quickly used all my free attributes points like I usually do which caused my body to grow in size again before I flickered and arrived beside him, the vice commander. He was in charge of the army because Hiyashi was focusing on controlling the huge amount of chakra he recently received from Kurama. Meanwhile, Akira who was focusing on organizing the army into teams to take advantage of the terrain and traps planted all over the battlefield was surprised when he felt someone appear beside him so he turned and was about to reprimand this reckless person but he stopped when he saw it was a boy he found familiar but didn't fully recognize. Who's this? thought Akira in bewilderment while looking at the boy who seemed familiar yet not at the same time. Who are you? Akira asked with a serious face while secretly putting his guard up. It's me Bakorio, I just came to say that once the distraction starts, I will set off on my own so don't worry about my placement on the battlefield. A Jonan beside us couldn't help but chuckle while looking at the boy who was thinking so highly of himself, but in his eyes, he was simply trying to throw his life away pointlessly so he said, Kid, what are you talking about, you think you are a hero or something? Everyone needs to go in teams, I ignored that Jonan and simply looked at Akira waiting for his response. This kid is serious was all Akira could think as he looked at the absolute seriousness and confidence in the kid's eyes and he knew he wasn't asking for his permission, he was simply telling him what he was going to do. He received some information about this kid from the higher ups as many people vouched for his strength including the 4th and 5th Hokages, yet it couldn't change the fact in his eyes that he was still a kid even if he was. From the strong Uchiha clan. First of all, are you really Bakorio? inquired Akira with a change of demeanor as the difference in my body wasn't small and if I turn out to be an imposter, he was ready to strike me down. Vice Commander, do you really believe that he's that kid? That Jonan from earlier kept looking at me in annoyance and distrust especially when I ignored him. Akira didn't respond and simply looked at me waiting for me to do something that couldn't be faked. Yes it's me, I am using a secret jutsu to strengthen my body temporarily, 
I said as the pupils of both my eyes turned red like a blood moon with three tomo revolving inside of them. It's really him, just what kind of jutsu could change a kid so much, thought Akira but he relaxed soon after and said responsibly, I can't let you go on the battlefield on your own, it's too dangerous and you are inexperienced so you might cause your death at any moment and ruin our attack plans, I couldn't help but respect this man standing with his back straight like a spear clearly not the type to send his people to their deaths like a certain Orochimaru, Rip Nawaki. However, I couldn't waste too much time here and keep arguing with him so I used my trump card right away, you know what my mission was originally right. Akira flinched at my question and hesitated to answer right away so I continued by saying, stop wasting our time and just do your best leading our forces, I will be fine, I directly flickered away leaving Akira and that Jonan behind, what's that kid talking about? Asked the Jonan who knew that there were some changes to the plans since he or she wasn't going to lead the army anymore. Instead, this responsibility fell on the hands of Akira who was now clenching his hands very tightly to the point that blood stopped flowing through them and said, nothing. Complete the final preparations right away, while inside he was thinking, if you don't come back safe, I will make sure to beat you up in the afterlife, before he returned his attention to making the final preparations for Kumo's impending attack. Meanwhile, just outside the camp, Kurama was lying down with his eyes closed and he or she standing in front of him trying to control the chakra he was just given. Sensing my presence, Kurama opened his eyes and was surprised at the huge change that occurred to my body after the enhancement but he didn't say anything to not disturb he or she. I approached Kurama and to his surprise gently stroked his head before I whispered, we need to talk. With his eyes wide in surprise, Kurama nodded at me and I did some silencing seals to stop any sound from leaving this area before my eyes turned into my Mangekio Sharingan and a heavy and dark aura of death radiated from me further isolating the area surrounding us from praying eyes before I stopped and said, Kurama, how much do you know about the treasures of the Sage of the Six Paths? The slit in Kurama's eyes contracted a little as this question hit one of his sore spots causing the atmosphere around him to change. Gur, why do you want to know about them? For the first time, I could feel some hostility towards me coming from Kurama who was looking at me with a dangerous look in his eyes. This is thanks to my Mangekio Sharingan ability, Jikaninki, which allows me to feel emotions. However, his hostility was visible even without using my ability making me feel disappointed. Don't worry, I am not interested in possessing them, however they are already in the possession of Kumo's forces and I believe they will use them in the war. One item in particular which I believe is the strongest among these five treasures is the Kohaku no Johei. And I think they will use it to seal you, Kurama growled in. Discomfort and said, that damned pot still exists. Yes, so you should be careful and not get arrogant and use the full power of the seal Minato and Kashina gave you as well as anything in your power to interrupt the rakage from using it. That's all, once I finished what I said, I directly started leaving, and Kurama who also could feel emotions felt something very clearly emanating from me. It was, disappointment. Knowing that he made a mistake, Kurama felt guilty at misunderstanding my intentions so he quickly caught me with his huge hand and said, wait. I turned at this big fox with my eyes back to normal and saw him struggling to say something causing it to come out like gibberish, Ia underscore Rai, what? I asked coldly, Gur I am sorry kid I misunderstood you, said Kurama with an angry tone to hide his embarrassment. Sensing the clear feeling of guilt inside Kurama, I ended up sighing and forgiving him. Don't worry about it, anyways do you have any idea how those items came to be in the possession of Kumo? This question really bothered me because logically, these items should have been in the possession of the descendants of Hagoromo, the Sage of the Six Paths. Yet his currently known descendants which are the Uchiha, the Senju, and Uzumaki that happened to be in Konoha and the now destroyed Uzushiogakur didn't have these items leaving only one speculation. Perhaps the main family of Kumo is somehow related to the Sage of the Six Paths. Well Asura had more than one clan as his descendants so it's not impossible for the same to be true for Indra, maybe one clan inherited his eyes as for the other clan who didn't, they were granted the tools of his father instead and that clan might possibly be the current leaders of Kumo for generations. A clan without a name in the original Naruto. The more I thought about it the more it seemed believable to me especially when I remembered that like Sasuke, Indra also was very talented in lightning release as much as he was in fire release so this theory might truly be possible. 
I heard Kurama's voice breaking me out of my thoughts saying, I don't know, the sage of the six paths sent me to the land of fire right before his death, and I didn't leave that territory until the time I was sealed Gur. I could see pure rage hidden in Kurama's expression like a savage animal with his fangs showing menacingly. Well, can't blame him, it's only logical to feel this way after what happened to him. I sighed expecting his answer before I said, give me some more of your chakra. He snorted in displeasure but extended his hand anyways and put it on my shoulder before he started injecting me with more of his chakra enough for a full first tailed beast transformation and as I was adjusting to it. Hiyashi who was new to Kurama's chakra finally gained control of it. He looked at me in surprise clearly bewildered by the change my body experienced from the attributes enhancement like anyone who saw me before. However, he instantly knew that I wasn't a fake and his face quickly turned to worry which he tried to hide while thinking. Just at what cost did you gain this kind of power? So he quickly asked me about going straight to the point, what happened to you Bakorio? I could see from his expression that he misunderstood my power up for some forbidden jutsu but explaining to him is impossible so I simply decided to ignore his question and said, nothing, I'm fine, try using Kurama's chakra to transform into the first tailed beast mode, he or she wasn't pleased with my answer and yelled at me, what do you mean nothing? You clearly used some kind of forbidden jutsu and god knows what you sacrificed for this power. Kurama looked at me silently and I could tell he was having the same emotions. As he is she currently so I decided to lie. I used a secret jutsu that's true, however my life isn't in danger so don't worry. Go ahead and use your Byakugan if you want and you will easily confirm what I am saying. He is she quickly used his Byakugan causing veins to appear around his eyes and started checking my bones, muscles, and organs but he couldn't find anything wrong with my body and everything seemed to be working just fine, instead he was surprised as it seemed to have reached this point thanks to pure training so, he gave me a deep look and reluctantly nodded his head before he said, I will believe you for now, however, inside he knew his Byakugan can't check a person's life energy or vitality. Then he started using Kurama's chakra and he was quickly enveloped in a red bubbling chakra with four tails extending behind his back which was the maximum he could control in this short amount of time. Amazing, was all he or she could think as he felt just how much stronger this state made him as it enhanced all his physical attributes from strength, agility, defense, and stamina and it also gave him many options to extend his fighting arsenal. After all, this chakra could be used to create very versatile chakra hands that can be used to attack enemies in all kinds of ways, and their effect will be maximized when a master in taijutsu like him uses it. This is no different than giving a tiger wings and from the satisfied look on Hiyashi's face and the powerful presence he was emanating right now. I knew he could deal with Killer B or at least survive against him even if B fully transforms. With our preparation ready, we soon heard Akira giving the command to prepare for the enemy attack which some of the scouts already detected so I quickly gave both Kurama and Hiyashi a nod and said. Good luck you two, good luck, said Hiyashi. Gur don't die kid, said Kurama while secretly wondering about how the kid knew about the sage of the six paths so he decided to ask after the war, if he got the chance. With our goodbyes set, I quickly traveled to Akira's location. Seeing me arrive after meeting Hiyashi and the Nine Tails made him even more at ease with my identity so he nodded at me and asked, what do you want Bakorio? I nodded back at him in greeting and said, please tell me where the army of Kumo is most concentrated, I could feel many emotions fighting in his heart even though his face didn't change at all. Pride, guilt, anger, but one emotion started slowly prevailing as he looked at the eyes of the boy in front of him. Eyes that weren't afraid of this war that ignited his fighting spirit. Okay, our forces. I quickly memorized everything he told me about both Kanaha's and Kumo's forces before I thanked him and quickly followed after the teams leaving for the war. And so my last battle in the Kumo front was going to start. I quickly flickered in the direction of the forest where the most dangerous battles were going to take place following after Kanaha's forces and my eyes slowly started transforming into my Mangekio Sharingan. And then... Swoosh swoosh projectiles started flying in the air heading directly towards every fatal spot of my body and they hit their target before I could react causing me many grievous wounds and start falling from the air, or at least that's what my two attackers thought. Two people were hiding using the trees as their cover and thinking their sneak attack succeeded. They were wearing Kumo's standard attire which consists of a long, 
gray top which gathers just at the waist to give a sash-like appearance, with a matching colored bottom. Over this, they wore white, one-strapped flak jackets and arm as well as shin guards. They both smirked and nodded at each other. Signaling that the job here was finished and they were about to start finding another target to assassinate, however, soon the boy they thought they killed transformed into a tree stump. This was the magic of the substitution jutsu. With incredible speed, I appeared behind one of them and coldly stabbed him with a lethal kunai in the back of the throat before I quickly retrieved it causing him to close his wound in panic with his hands to no avail as his blood slowly drained from his body as he made gurgling sounds and started falling to the ground. Then I threw that same kanai in the direction of the other ninja and took a deep breath while doing some hand signs. Great breakthrough jutsu. I exhaled a surge of strong wind in the same direction of the kanai enhancing its speed even more. The kanai flew in a blinding speed leaving this chunin no time to react before he was stabbed in the head leaving a gaping hole in it with blood and brain matter exploding everywhere and then I simply tugged a chakra string attached to the kanai to retrieve it while already flickering to my next target. Two corpses slowly started falling down from the trees. However, before they could even touch the ground, I was already in front of my next target which happens to be another Chunin trapped in one of Kanaha's traps and was trying to break a barrier using a blade coated in lightning release chakra. Without hesitation, I sent four normal kunais with explosives attached to them, and before long, the barrier along with the Chunin inside of it went boom and were blasted into smithereens. Let the hunting begin was the only thought in my mind as I left behind three corpses in a very short amount of time, and like an apex predator, I quickly checked my map for the next close prey. I noticed that a small team of four people was heading my way. Clearly having heard the sound of the explosion, and while carefully bypassing some of the traps in the area they quickly arrived where the explosion just happened. They were a group made of one Jonin and three Chunin, and from the way they dodged the traps, they are probably very good with Fuenjutsu. Seeing the torn Kumo attire as well as the corpse that was blasted into many pieces made some of the inexperienced Chunin's wretch in disgust and almost throw up. However, the Jonin leader quickly became very stern while checking the area around them and said with a serious voice, don't let your guard down, the enemy might still be near. The three Chunin who heard their team captain slightly flinched that the enemy that could cause such a scene might still be nearby but even their strong captain couldn't sense him so they quickly nodded nervously and put their guard up and used a simple formation to cover for each other as lightning started covering their blades but they still had some flaws that could be exploited. However, unfortunately for them, death already had them as its target. I watched silently while using my Yomi no Kuni ability to completely hide my presence while using the passive of my Jikaninki which made me realize one thing very clearly. If I couldn't feel emotions, I might have truly put my guard down a little and attacked their clearly flawed formation while they are in this nervous state. What sneaky and dangerous people, the battlefield is truly not a simple place, indeed, there was no emotion of nervousness in those three Chunin. It was all an act from the start to draw out the one who caused the explosion and to make themselves seem like an easy target. Understanding that no one should be underestimated in war and things aren't always as they seem. I quickly chose the perfect time when that Jonin surveying the surroundings was about to look in the direction I was in. The moment he did, I shifted my position catching him by surprise and leaving him no time to react as he looked straight at my blood red eyes. The moment we made eye contact, I directly put that Jonin into a genjutsu which he wasn't going to leave anytime soon. Not good, was all he could think before he found himself in a very dark grey land covered with white ashen skeletons. This scene creeped him out to no end, but it only increased much more when the hollow eyes on the skulls of those skeletons begin shining with a pale green light and a shiver seemed to have run through the still bones covering the grounds. No, no I need to wake up this is just a genjutsu, they will soon break me free from it. The Jonin tried to raise his confidence however no matter what he did, he couldn't break from this genjutsu on his own and he started praying for his comrades to free him. However, he was soon cut off from his prayers as a cold and bony hand slowly caught his leg. It was a feeling that sent shivers down his spine so he quickly tried to struggle away from it. But more and more hands started catching him and the skeletons in the distance started rising up and he noticed to his horror that they had all kinds of different shapes. From animals to humans to giants that reached the sky of this land to demons with horns and creepy auras still revolving around them even in their death. 
It was anyone's worst nightmare, and soon those skeletons held him in place and what followed next was indescribable. Meanwhile, the three Chunin could hear their captain freeze with absolute terror on his face and they quickly understood that they were under attack so they quickly adjusted their formation hiding any of its previous apparent flaws. Next, two of them simultaneously attacked the direction their captain looked at while the last one tried to free him from the genjutsu. One of the Chunin quickly did some hand signs monkey right pointing arrow ox right pointing arrow boar right pointing arrow tiger, lightning rat violent quake, he released a strong discharge of electricity in the form of several destructive discs that were homing in on my position while cutting anything in their way. Meanwhile, the second Chunin did different hand seals and then put his hand on the ground. Dog right pointing arrow dragon right pointing arrow rat right pointing arrow ram, lightning release, spider web, once his hands touched the ground, a giant web made of electricity covered the area surrounding them while avoiding touching any of his comrades. This web would electrocute anyone that touches it which will immobilize them forcing them to be careful about their positioning and leaving them with the best option of attack being from the air. Not bad, but it's not enough. I thought as I looked at the attacks flying my way before I stepped very hard on the branch of the tree I was sitting on destroying it in the process and disappearing from their view. Thank you for listening guys please like and subscribe see you in the next part.